Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cars of Glasgow. And today we're going to be taking a look at the 2020 Audi A4 45 TFSI Black Edition. So stay tuned for this video. So here we have the current generation Audi A4 in facelift for the 2020 model year. And you can tell it's a facelift by a few characteristics. We've got the new daytime running lights that are kind of segregated up top. We've also got kind of new grille design, been a black pack, everything's blacked out as well. There's different trims now, Audi have got it kind of from the Technic to the Sport, S-Line, the Black Edition and then the Vorsprung. Also at the front you may notice we've got this little plastic fake looking intake. Well it is fake sorry, it's an intake but it doesn't actually go anywhere but they've done that in the A1, the R8, all these new current Audis to kind of modernise it and you can kind of distinguish it from the unfacelifted model. And I'll quick like how Audi down below have integrated your radar and all your cruise control, uh, all your kind of safety systems are all integrated down here in the bumper. As I mentioned, this being the black edition, everything's blacked out, so we've got the black gloss plastic all on the front end, which makes it look quite sharp. And as always, you'd expect an Audi to be in a kind of grey colour like this. So the black edition is based off the S line, as denoted by the S line package. We do get these nice 19 inch alloy wheels which are two-tone with the silver and grey and they say Audi Sport there and I think they're quite aggressive kind of turbine style looking and they're very unique to Audi models. Uh, we've got the sharp character line straight up giving that squared off Audi look. If we move around to the rear of the car. So now at the rear end of the car you can see where the facelift has also changed the rear tail light so now we've got again the kind of split look under the rear tail light. We've got this connecting piece running across the back. Depending on the trim, that might be silver, might be kind of a black colour. I've also got the new model de designation of Audi. So they used to be back in the old days 2 litre turbo, 2 litre diesel, but now they're going with like 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. I think all the way up to 75 for the R8. And it kind of denotes the power of this car. So it's not a 4.5 litre, it is actually a 2 litre turbo and it's got 265 brake horsepower and that is just stratified forced something turbo stratified something injection I can't remember but anyway being a high spec Audi A4 we do get the quattro system denoted by that and we'll see that when we're out on the road and being the S-Line trim we also get rear aggressive bumpers and down below we get these tailpipes that are moulded into the bumper itself instead of the exhaust tip itself they're actually into the moulding We'll have a quick look in the boot of the car, so you get the key fob out, double tap that twice. And we have 480 litres of boot space at our disposal, which is pretty decent. It's pretty much the same space you're going to find in the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes-Benz C-Class. They're all pretty competitive within a few litres of each other, and it is pretty deep how far back it goes. We do have split folding rear seats back there, and we've got tie-down hooks. A little bit of lift up here where the spare tyre could go with a little bit of storage. If you really wanted to, you could hide something in there. Cargo nets, all nicely finished off and not too much of an intrusion from the hinges uh, to affect any of your cargo. The boot itself is quite light to use and close up. And as I said, touching on again, a quick like, design feature of the rear lights, it does modernise the A4. We'll go ahead and have a look in the back. Handy if I unlock the car. jump in. For anybody new to the channel, I am 5 foot 11, set up for my driving position and I've got plenty of knee room. Headroom is pretty decent and material quality in the back of the Audi does continue into the back as well as the front, from the front even. So we've got the nice leather seats, we've got Alcantara in the door, nice piano black on the trim, electric door windows <laughs> around and buying also speaker in your door and it is pretty well padded and it does have that lovely Audi smell. And in the rear we've got seating for three, two outer seats, again you can have your child seat and you just lift up these little hooks there to fit your child seat in and you're good to go. Rear passengers can also get the benefit of rear climate and a little bit of a charging port there. You may notice there's no cargo nets or anything behind the driver passenger so you won't be storing your iPads or anything like that in there. I like how well built the doors are as well, like the build quality in the Audi is pretty impressive. Feels very well built and solid and nice blend of materials with, as I said, the piano black, Alcantara, a little bit of metal for the door and you've got the Bynelson <laughs> speaker down below. 
So we'll go ahead and jump inside the Audi 4. Jump inside, close the door, and you really feel the quality of the door. Very <laughs> Germanic in the way it's built, very solid. And the materials used are pretty nice. Got nice quality rubber, rubberized kind of uh, plastic up top. Piano black inlay there, being the black edition, I'm sure you can get silver and maybe uh, well, silver metals and kind of woods if you wanted. Nice finished door handle that feels kind of like kind of metallic. Easy to reach door lock and unlock, nice and ergonomic. Bit of Alcantara down here, door switches, all electric windows all round, and a little bit of <laughs> storage down below for a water bottle and your bit lilies. Inside, I'm pretty impressed with the cabin, just in first jumping inside. Everything is pretty well built. As I said, you've got the rubberized plastic all across the dash. Lots of piano black in here, which does look good at first, I'll tell you, but maybe after a couple of years, it does scratch on personal experience, and probably many of you can testify to that. We've got a little bit of storage underneath here, which you can keep your phone in some cars, you can get your wireless charging in there. We've got a USB-C port, which is labeled USB number two, and you can slide that forward, like so. USB port number one is down here below, and that's your traditional USB charger. A little bit of a 12 volt power outlet, cup holders, and the main thing I've noticed, shut the car up. Okay, it's nice and quiet in here, which is nice. But the main thing I've noticed in the middle is because they've got the new touchscreen, let's get the fan speed down. We've got rid of the MMI controller down here, so we've got a little bit of storage now for coins, things like that, which is handy. And everything here is through this massive touchscreen here, which kind of looks like an iPad tacked on. Not everybody's a fan of it, it doesn't really bother me myself. It is very high resolution and very quick to respond. And when you tap through, I'm not sure if you can hear that come through the camera, you do have a little click just to let you know you've actually touched it. And you can pinch and zoom pretty well, almost as good as a phone, it's one of the best I would say I've actually used in terms of pinch and zoom in recent years. So the camera options in this car are pretty good, you've got pretty much 360 front and rear overview which is pretty cool, look down bird's eye, front camera, gives you the bud for the car, so so many variations you can do and the camera resolution is pretty high if you can see that coming through on the camera and being a modern facelift card as well, they've also got a digital cockpit that Audi probably do one of the best, if not the best, uh, display for a digital cockpit because there's so many things you can do with regards to the gauges. You can have the big map that we have here. You can push touch of a button, the gauges become big. Just depending on what you want, it's very configurable. The steering wheel, flat bottom, it reminds me a lot of my Golf GTD that I had a few years ago. Uh, I quite like that, it means getting in and out of the car a wee bit easier, it gives it a bit of a racy feel as well. Leather's uh, nice, got a bit of perforated rail on the side at the 10 and 2, got nice thumb positions there to grip onto. Indicator stocks and wipers, nice like, quite light to use but good quality feeling, don't feel to cheap cruise control down on the left. We do have a manually adjusted steering column for a car that's nearly £50,000. A little bit cheeky of Audi. Uh, and we do have part uh, electric seats, but they're also part manual as well, which again, for this price point, is just a little bit of a great for myself. Uh, automatic lights and all your kind of light switches, fog lights are on the right hand side. As I mentioned, door controls uh, on the door, so you've got your window switches and your mirror adjustment. In the centre here, we've got climate control now. They have decided to keep the climate control actual physical buttons and knobs, which is nice. A neat touch they've got is the fact you've got the digital information inside the knobs. It reminds me of like a Jaguar Land Rover product that they kind of first done it in my eyes. Had that, will be somebody comment below probably when the first car, it was like 1990 something, but I quite like that feature. It is gnarled and it's got a nice texturized feeling, and just everything's quite tactile in the Audi. Fan speed and all that's easy to use. It does kind of, as soon as you touch the little bit of, <laughs> it does look like metal, but it's kind of probably plastic, uh, coated with this kind of metal look-alike finish. Run, run across and I'll show you a wee image of that. That's quite nice to see. Heated seats, nice big buttons. You don't have to dig through any menus, which some cars do these days. Uh, down below, you've got drive select. You can go between dynamic mode, comfort, efficiency, all at a touch of a button down here. Traction control off, parking sensors off, turn the screen off. All these big easy to use buttons are down below because you're not going to use them every day, but they're easy to reach and use. This car and most Audi 4s come with the 7-speed semi-automatic or the S-tronic gearbox. 
and it looks like a bit like an airplane throttle shifter. I think it's a pretty cool design. We've got that kind of um, perforated rail on top. Push the button on the side, and you can pull it down for D for drive, all the way up for reverse. And there's a separate button on the shifter itself for park, automatic uh, holding, and we've also got an electric, electronic parking brake. What I do quite like as well, we've also got the kind of knurled knob down here closest to the passenger that allows you to turn up the volume for the radio and you can push turn on and off and you can physically push it left and right if you want to switch track or radio station things like that and it's again nice and easy to keep you if you're driving on the road you can turn it up and down quickly or you can hit it left and right without having to take your eyes off the road uh, that's a quite a neat touch with regard to the interior design of the car it is very germanic quite straight edge and lined i like the fact they've got this kind of fake vent looking in the middle here it kind of continues across we've got the two vents in the middle and one far left in the passenger and i kind of first seen that i'd probably say the volkswagen passat i think the 2015 model had something similar going on and then it's in here in the 2020 audi a4 it does kind of deceptive and you think oh is that a massive vent but it's just the way the design is kept across quite straight lines and just below that in the black gloss plastic that we're just not going to touch we've got the quattro badge to remind you that you're in an audi a4 with the quattro key harking back to the heritage of the rally days of the 1980s Audi Quattro. The seats inside the car being uh, based on this line that are sporty, uh, got nice bolstering on the side, that is electro electronically controlled. Electro buttons, button, have got lumbar support, poking you up in the back, you can adjust that any way you want and it is a very comfortable car to get yourself in. The rail in the car is pretty high quality as well and you do have that nice new car smell, new rather smell, and Audis have always got a very distinct smell if you've been in a new Audi, you'll know what I'm talking about. I do like the white contrast stitching, just lighting up the cabin, and Audis have done a good job of having the embossed kind of S logo in the wrestling models for a few years now, and I've always quite liked how they've done that because quite often you have to go quite premium uh, with regards to like high-end Porsches and Bentleys and things to get it maybe embroidered or hot stamped <laughs> seats, and it's quite nice to see in an Audi 4. Build quality as well, everything's so solid, uh, trust me, you're trying to move the transmission tunnel, things like that, there's nothing really creaking and rattling, especially cars like a Mercedes-Benz C-Class that does creak and rattle when you touch the plastic, it's very well built and solid, and I give the point and hats off to the Audi for that. Up here we've got nice touch capacitive lighting, which is maybe hard to see because we're kind of about 7 o'clock at night, and it's still quite bright, which is rare for Scotland. Headlining, nice and spongy, all blacked out being a black edition, but it is very high quality and spongy. And this particular car's got the Bang & Olufsen sound system, which, without getting too much copyright, it sounds really good. And you've got little Bang & Olufsen tweeters up the top in the dash, uh, one in the boot, or top in the bootlet, sorry. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It wouldn't be a Cars of Glasgow video without the glove box video. And as you can see, very large, softly damped, and lined with the fuzzy stuff. Nice and big, <laughs> nice and big, nice and big and deep. And again, we have another look at the seats now. We're up close and personal, and the nice leather material has continued throughout the cabin. So I just want to say thanks very much for watching my video on the Audi A4. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to Cars of Glasgow below. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Cars of Glasgow. I'll leave all the information in the description below. If you have any questions or comments on the Audi, please comment and I will see you next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.